Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to where the city of Narbonne, Gaul, nowadays France, would have been if it hadn't have been desolated. And it is a place of significance to the next famous Roman woman of this period that we are going to be discussing, Galla Placidia. But before we get started with that, let's take stock of what's going on. So, it appears that Dyrrhachium was only raided by the Quadians, which is great for us, but what really stinks is that we had an army right there, and maybe because they were in forced march, I'm not sure, but they were not able to assist in that battle. Were they able to, we probably would have won. Now the problem is, the Quadians are now on the water, where we are not particularly good. I'm pretty sure we could win the battle. Let's just see what happens. Well, they're running from us. That's a good sign. Alright. Let's just aggressively take them out. Decisive victory. Now, let's just see if we suffered any bad consequences from that. None. Okay, excellent. And he gained a level. He's a handler? That's not that useful to us at this point. For this fellow. I'm just trying to see if, as a general, that skill can be used in any kind of way. It just says local province. So I guess if we recruited a agent in a province where his army is, it would indeed affect it. But I don't need that right now. I need things to make the army better. Integrity and authority would be useful. I think this is one of the guys I adopted too, so that would help. And cunning and public order, since he's now going to be defending our lands, would probably be useful as well. We already have full replenishment. Our army is as buffed out in defense as it possibly can be. So the next thing would be recruitment cost or benefits to cavalry. We only have one unit of scout equites, so that's not that useful to us. So we're just going to go, yeah, with this. And this increases authority and his cunning. Improve public order. Very good. And now, Quadians, since you've kind of pissed me off, to land. we're coming for you. There is Illyria. I actually... I have too many enemies, and I'd like to get in good with Illyria, if possible. They're at least Roman, so they're culturally similar to we are. Or to what we are. We have an improving relation with them. We are, as always, a welcoming host to you. They do not want to trade. It would be very lucrative for us if they were to agree. We'd earn a thousand gold a turn. What if we gave you a thousand gold? Moderate. I think it's worth it. Let's give it a try. Nope. Alright, what if... How much would a gift cost? Over a thousand. Our relations are improving by themselves. We'll just leave it like that. It's worth noting that everyone else in the world pretty much hates us. So, if I could be friends with Illyria, that would be very useful. Dacia is about ready to revolt. We cannot allow that. Oh, that's interesting. We can, we can march there without having to cross the water. Alright. I thought we've already tried to dismantle this numerous times. Why is this not working for us here? Dismantle. Damn it. Now this could either be a weaponsmith or a tool maker. Wealth from industrial and agricultural, which we don't have any. This is just a construction site. This would give us plus one recruitment capacity and some iron. Both would give us iron. The tool maker would give us more iron. Then the question is, do I want recruitment in this province to be good? And the answer is no, I don't. I don't really care. So the iron production is really what I want. But I don't know if I want to spend the money on it just yet. Sanitation's pretty good here. 
What would be worth building here? Nothing really. I guess sanitation would make public order go up, and it would give us a little bit of wealth. I don't want a church. I don't want to recruit troops here. Industries would give us some money, but... Eh. Alright, we're just going to try. We're going to hopefully, again, this... I don't know if maybe sacred ground just can't be... taken out. Maybe I'd have to convert it first. And then dismantle it. Who knows? We'll see. But we do have some money. So let's put it to good use. Where? We needed a bunch of things. Let's see. Here we go. We've already improved the reservoir here. And here. I think we were down here that we wanted to do something. Tyrus. No, we're already improving that here too. We could improve our dyes. So that'll increase squalor by two. Which would hurt sanitation. So let's wait till this gets built, maybe next turn. Since we have enemies around here, let's upgrade Melatine and. There's something I wanted to do here. What was it? Did I want industry? Oh man, so many people are happy. Bithynia, of course, Cappadocia, Cilicia. So this whole central area is unhappy. I don't know what is causing him to be so unhappy. Libya. These ones should be unhappy, although Ethiopia should be getting better, I thought. Now it's down by one. How can I serve Rome? The priest is not having his effect. Why? Taxes, immigrants. Okay, so immigrants, for some reason, they're getting immigrants. And the political situation. Greek Christian is definitely on the rise, though. Dang it, I thought Ethiopia was settled. What can I do to make it better? I can improve this, which will improve public order. But it will increase squalor. A thermi I don't want to spend the money on, or an aqueduct. A capital would provide public order and wealth. A forum would provide public order and wealth. So the forum can go... Oh, the forum could be a scriptorum, so we could improve our research and also give us wealth. We're not going to do the amphitheater or the theater because it improves Roman paganism, which we don't want. The tabernay would eventually lead to... A slave market, which gives us wealth and road development. A wine market, which gives us a lot of wealth and road development. So this one's the best as far as money is concerned. And this has the least amount of wealth, but it gives us food. Interesting. So definitely not interested in slaves. Not a lot of wealth, and it only gives us bonuses to industrial buildings, while this gives us bonuses to cultural buildings. But I think I like the whole scriptorum path myself. What else could we do? The capital would eventually either go to a governor's house, which would improve public order a lot and give us some cultural growth. Okay, that's fine. Or we can do the banking house, which gives us trade. Faction wide. Not that useful. So public order plus 9, but no money. Well, a little bit of money. 300, and improves the tax rate a little bit. Gives us more of a garrison. Not that useful down here. So 300 plus 9 public order. Or... It's 450. No public order benefit. We lose it, I guess, as soon as we go up to a scriptorum. And actually, the public order goes down. So it gives you plus three public order for the forum, but then if you upgrade it to anything but the auditorium, 
public order actually goes down. Interesting. Well, it doesn't go down this path, but it plus three goes away, I'm pretty sure. So that's made our decision for us. We're going to build the capital. Because we need public order more than anything else, and that's the long-term solution for that. All right. Dassey, I know they're pissed off. Nothing I can do about that. Cilicia is actually getting better. So it leaves us with Bithynia, or Bithynia, and Cappadocia. We're working on both of them. What can we do in terms of industry? This will lower public order, but give us more wealth. Animal husbandry. Bithynia actually has decent fertility, so I think we should stick with the fields there. So we're not going to have much animal husbandry. This will lower construction costs, which will be helpful to us. But it will lower public order and improve squalor. Let's see. We have plenty of sanitation to support a bit more squalor. Oh yeah, we have plenty of sanitation. But public order minus two, that's the problem. Because we don't have that. Let's wait till this gets built in four turns. So we could also build a public order building here. That would certainly be helpful in the long run. Let's do that. Capital. Okay. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. It sounds like a good idea to me. I don't know if it'd be better to spend that on something military or something research-wide. Obviously, I want scriptorums. I wish they had some kind of public order benefit. But they do not. And I'm pretty much out of money, so... This gentleman is going to go over here to try to join up with this army. Alright. It's time to fight Cartley. I like it. It says we're slightly favored, but they're fighting it out. Let's do it. So in the next few episodes, we're going to be speaking about Ilia Gala Placidia. And I want to mention a new book that I'm going to be adding to my list of sources. And that book is Gala Placidia, The Last Roman Empress by Haggith Sivan. Now, Gala Placidia was born in 388. She was the daughter of Theodosius I, or Theodosius the Great, and she was a granddaughter on her mother's side with the Western Emperor Valentinian I. So she is obviously very blue blood in terms of Roman aristocracy. Wait. Yeah. Oh, look at these guys. I did not even know this. They've built a fort. This is going to be problematic because of the towers. Oh, uh, remember the last fort siege? It went really, really poorly. A siege engine would be really nice about now. Something that would take out the towers. So here's the plan. We'll test Udo, everyone. We'll put our ranged units at the front. We'll just leave them here for right now. And the cavalry is just going to stay well away from any trouble. As will our general. Okay. So I was told that if you hold down alt and move troops, that they move in formation. Can't really tell if that actually is working or not, but hopefully it is. So Gala Placidia was also the half-sister of Arcadius and Honorius. So you can kind of get an idea of, of where she fits into things. What's interesting is that she was granted her own household by her father, Theodosius, when she was 
under 10 years old. So she was financially independent and living on her own when she was under 10 years old. She was also given an honorary title called Nobelissima Puella, or the Most Noble Girl. However, her father died, and at that point, she grew up in the household of Stilicho in the West. Stilicho, if you remember, was one of the generals of Theodosius, who basically ended up ruling the Western Roman Empire on behalf of Honorius. All right. So we're going flaming shot. And we are going to try to take out the towers. Now these guys, I don't think... Yeah, they can't do anything to the towers. So they are just going to... What are you going to do? You can take out the cavalry. And you can take out their archers. Okay, so the tower's firing on us. We'll see how this works. It may not work out very well for us. We'll loosen them up. See if that does us any good. Okay. Gala was betrothed to Stilicho's son at the time. And now Stilicho had a lot of connections already to the Imperial family. If you'll remember, he was a half Vandal, or he might have been full Vandal, I forget, general. And he had that position where he was in charge of the entire military of the Western Roman world. And he basically was ruling the Empire in the name of Honorius. Hey, we seem to be doing okay. Fire damage already up to 25 on this one. They're just running around looking lost, so that's fine. I don't want you guys to get any closer, though. Meanwhile, we can move everyone else up. Okay. However, Stilicho and his son, as we know, were deposed and executed due to some shady internal Roman political maneuverings. So at that point, Gala moved to Rome along with Stilicho's wife, who raised Gala, pretty much, Serena. And at this point, Honorius was still the emperor of the West, but Arcadius had died in the East and was replaced by his son, the young Theodosius II. Wow, these range units are just terrible. What are we at here? I don't really care. As long as the archers stay around. This one's at... Are you not even firing at it? Come on, do something. Might as well go with precision shot. No reason not to. Let's take this thing down. 64% fire damage, and yep, he's fleeing. Shoot. Alright, you get out of there. Our forces have found their courage. Back to the fight. So during the siege of Rome by the Visigoths that we discussed in an earlier episode, Serena and Gala were in Rome during this time. Now, that siege lasted between 408 and 410. So, Serena, she was accused of conspiring with Alaric to let him into the city. And this was a notable event because she was most likely innocent of this charge, but also her execution took place in the city with the acceptance and collusion and potentially support of Gala Placidia, the woman that Serena practically raced and would have been her mother-in-law. Now, this might have been due to the higher social standing that Serena had at the time relative to Placidia, and it gives us our first sign that Placidia is a 
political creature. She does what it takes to improve her own standing. What are we at here? 100% fire damage. Okay. Great. So now I want you guys over here quickly. You can speed that up a bit. I don't care. They can run. So at some point before Rome finally fell to the Visigoths, Placidia was captured by Alaric and the Visigoths. And she spent the next five years of her life through the year 415, traveling around Italy, France, and eventually Spain with the Visigoths. All right, the wall's burning down. Excellent. This one has no fire damage at all. Let's take it down. Come on, guys. A unit is running from the enemy. So they're kind of backing up here. This is very interesting how they're handling this. We can speed it up even more. So that wall's gone completely. Our men are breaking off. This one is slowly raising in fire damage, not by a lot. So in the year 413, during her captivity with the Visigoths, King Atolf, who ruled after Alaric died, he assisted the Romans by taking out two usurpers, two Gallic usurpers, and he sent their heads to Honorius. And because Atolf was Romanized and desired legitimacy, he decided to marry Gala Placidia in Narbonne, France, or Gaul, in the year 414. He spared no expense whatsoever to make the wedding seem, to all intents and purposes and outside observation, to be just like any other wedding by noble Roman people. And it looks like we are out of ammo. Alright, well that tower's still around. It's not going to help us, but okay, that's fine. Let's move everybody up. We can attack from this angle here. And let's put our cavalry in a good position. General. This is going to be very interesting. And we're already in range of that tower. Oh, that tower is just going to tear us up. If only our archers weren't complete idiots. Let's go that way. And with a little bit of haste. I'm not very good at forward assaults, to be honest. So though other members of his people may have argued with this philosophy, Atolf wanted to be seen as legitimately Roman. And also he probably wanted his descendants, who, um, him and Gala's descendants, to be blood relatives of Roman royalty on both sides, the Eastern and the Western. And eventually one day maybe sit on the Roman throne. Okay, let's, we're back at regular speed. Let's just pause things for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be ending the episode here. It's almost over anyway. And next episode, we will continue and complete this battle. And we'll continue speaking about Ilia Gala Placidia. So once again, thank you very much for watching. I'm Marcus Aurelius. Have a good one.